Uh, okay, 23 minutes after the hour, politics is our family business. Mark Brewer, the chairman of the Michigan Democratic Party, is nice enough to join us very early this morning, and surely he's making his way somewhere around the state. Good morning to you. Morning, Michael Patrick. On my way to the office. On your way to the office, very near the Capitol. Neighbors, here we are in this district. And, and was I correct? It was Jocelyn Benson at your office yesterday with a press event? Um, she was. I mean, all of our candidates are using our office for all kinds of different functions from day to day. A lot of traffic in and out of our headquarters these days. Um, we talked with her yesterday. Uh, we've talked with her a couple of times now. This is the Secretary of State nominee and candidate, Democrat Jocelyn Benson. Uh, very well educated. She's a Wayne State University law professor, currently on sabbatical. She's even written a book about what it means to be the Secretary of State by talking with Secretaries of State all across the nation. So she's poised for this job, relatively young lady. And some people have been saying that she's the next Governor Granholm. Um, uh, the Republican Party, for instance, likes to tout that. But is Jocelyn Benson sort of uh, distancing herself from Governor Granholm? No, not at all, Michael Patrick. But on the other hand, every candidate deserves to be considered on their own merits. And Jocelyn Benson has got great credentials to be this job. She's an outsider. She will be a reformer if she's elected Secretary of State. So, again, she, like every other candidate, deserves to be looked at on their own merits uh, in terms of what they would bring to that office. I think she'll bring reforms like, you know, no reason absentee voting. Uh, she's very keen on making sure we protect the integrity of our election process. She wants to improve the customer service of the Secretary of State's offices, and there's a lot of work that could be done there to improve them. So I think once voters get a chance to know her and take a look at her proposals, her reform vision, um, she'll prove very popular with the voters come November 2nd. Well, she got the endorsement of the uh, former Attorney General Frank Kelly, who is a very popular figure, very well-respected figure. And although he's a Democrat, by all accounts, as Attorney General, he was a sort of a nonpartisan uh, AG. Isn't that fair to say? I think it is, because he had to work with uh, Republican governors, Governor Milliken, for example, Governor Engler, and uh, he provided very even-handed, nonpartisan legal advice uh, to those folks. And, of course, he was very close to um, a model. Uh, Secretary of State Richard Austin mm -hmm. uh, for many, many years. They worked very closely together, and I think he sees in Jocelyn Benson a person who will be like Richard Austin and bring Michigan back to the forefront of reforming and improving our election process. Well, their headquarter building is named after Richard Austin, uh, who was at that time a longtime Secretary of State in Michigan, just like they called Frank Kelly the Eternal General because he was in office a long, long time. Um, Jocelyn Benson talked with us yesterday about the fact that the Secretary of State's office really should be nonpartisan. I mean, you get elected in a partisan fashion, but the execution of the office should be done in a nonpartisan fashion. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. And we've seen far too much partisanship in the way that office has been uh, run the last several years in terms of uh, campaign finance complaints being enforced against Democrats but not against Republicans and other examples of that. We really do need to have a nonpartisan administration of elections so that everybody can be assured of the integrity of the process. Still, though, I mean, it, it, does it make her, I mean, it, it, possibly, you could see why that would make her a little uncomfortable. The governor's approval rating is not very good, for whatever that's worth. And to say that she's the next Governor Granholm might be considered a sort of a, a, a pejorative, wouldn't it? Well, certainly the Republicans are using it in that way, and they're, again, attempting to prevent the voters from having a chance to take a look at Jocelyn Benson's program, Jocelyn Benson's qualifications uh, for running for governor. It, it's all part of this effort um, to, to label folks and then hide behind those labels. But again, I think once people get to know Jocelyn Benson, get to know her program of reform and improvement, coming to Lansing as an outsider to help improve a very dysfunctional state government, I think they'll embrace her come November 6th. Um, the uh, Supreme Court Justice Bob Young's not very happy with you. He says that uh, you are dragging his family through the political mud. Why does he say that, and are you? Well, the, the issue there is very simple. It's not about his family. It's about Bob Young. The Michigan Constitution, Michael Patrick, is very clear that if you're an elected official in Michigan, you have to be a Michigan resident. As a matter of fact, Bob Young has repeatedly said that um, from the bench in cases involving judges who uh, left their districts and were no longer residents. His wife, in a professional biography pu published last year, said that Bob Young was living in Milwaukee with her, where she had a job. Mm -hmm. That's the question. 
Bob Young. Are you a Michigan justice or are you a Wisconsin justice? Um, it's his wife that said he's been living in Wisconsin. It's not me, Michael Patrick. You know, um, this is not my allegation. This is a statement by his spouse that he's been living out of the state. So that's what Justice Young has to be held accountable for, and he owes the voters of Michigan an answer to that question. Well, he seems to be answering it by saying it was his wife that needed to get work in Wisconsin, and they were a commuter couple, is the way he puts it, uh, because of the downturn in Michigan's economy. So he says that the dog stayed with me, I helped Linda get settled and moved her out, and probably visited Linda in Wisconsin only a couple of times. I never lived in Wisconsin, and Linda did 99% of the commuting back and forth to Michigan on weekends. Well, that's not what his wife, Linda, said in this professional biography published last year. She said that she was living with her husband, Robert Young, their two children, and the dog in Milwaukee. That's what she said, Michael Patrick. Again, you don't have to take my word for it. This is a statement of his wife, published in a professional biography. So that's the question. The wife has said that he's been living in Milwaukee. And him simply making the statement that he did yesterday doesn't answer that question. Uh, over in the uh, 7th Congressional District of Battle Creek, Jackson, and parts of South Lansing, it's a very tight race, we understand. The Hill says uh, that it's virtually a dead heat right now between Congressman Mark Schauer, the Democrat, and the former Congressman Tim Wahlberg, uh, that their numbers are pulling very, very close. Why is that race so tight? Well, it's a very competitive district. Matter of fact, that district was gerrymandered 10 years ago to um, heavily favor uh, Republicans. Um, that's why Republicans have held it for such a long time. If it was a fairly drawn district, I think uh, Mark Schauer would be clearly in the lead. But it's a district drawn to favor uh, Republicans, and so it's always an uphill fight for Democrats. That being said, this is a real tribute to Mark Schauer. He's got great appeal, I think, to a lot of Republicans in that district who are not happy with Wahlberg's uh, tenure in office. A lot of independents in the district like Mark Schauer because of his efforts at creating jobs and providing constituent services, and then you've got Wahlberg's record. I mean, this is somebody who's come out and said, Michael Patrick, we need to privatize Social Security, we need to get rid of Medicare, that NAFTA has actually brought jobs to Michigan from China. I mean, this guy's completely detached from the economic reality, not only in the 7th District, but in Michigan. And when you make statements like that, it, it shows people the 7th District, you don't deserve to be their member of Congress. Um, do you think that district gets uh, Wahlberg burnout? And the reason I say that is he's run a number of times. He's been the congressman. He lost the seat. He's running for it again. Um, how do you define the line between burnout and name recognition, where people just are used to hearing the name over and over and over and over? Well, I think burnout in the sense of he's not somebody who will represent the district properly. Again, somebody who believes in privatizing Social Security and Medicare, somebody who believes that there's... Uh, really no role for the federal government in education. You know what that would mean to the tens of thousands of children in the 7th District in terms of their ability to have uh, to go to uh, uh, school, uh, get, get grants uh, and scholarships and so forth. Somebody who thinks that NAFTA has actually created jobs in the 7th District. So I think it's burnout in that sense, Michael Patrick, that people are seeing and learning, discovering that Tim Wahlberg is out of touch with the people of that district on, the, on, the, on these very fundamental issues. And having said that, if you're going to beat a sitting United States congressman, conventional wisdom is that he's weakest after his first term. Is that true? Yeah, that's the conventional wisdom. That's the conventional wisdom. But again, I think Mark Schauer has demonstrated time and again. Uh, he's delivered for that district. He's helped so many businesses in that district um, create jobs, stay in the district. He's a big supporter of education and making sure that people have access uh, to education so that they can boost themselves up. His constituent service has been outstanding. I know from talking to people in the district, uh, the first time they'd ever seen somebody from their congressman's office was when somebody from Mark Schauer's office showed up. They never saw Tim Wahlberg or his people. They didn't help the people of that district in terms of the wide variety of constituent matters that a member of Congress uh, can successfully intervene on. So Mark Schauer's got a real record of delivering that district in sharp contrast to the issue positions of Tim Wall. 
Um, meanwhile, the Attorney General nominee, David Layton, the Democrat, uh, issuing a challenge to Bill Schuette to cut his own pay and end his taxpayer-funded health benefits if he's elected. The uh, Layton campaign is hammering on Schuette, saying that when Schuette was a state legislator, he voted for a 38 percent pay raise for state lawmakers. Uh, meanwhile, Rusty Hills, who uh, works for Bill Schuette, says uh, Layton needs to get his facts straight. Bill Schuette never voted for a tax hike in the Senate, which is true. Well, Bill Schuette certainly took a 38% pay increase. He certainly is eligible and may be receiving lifetime health care benefits. These are the kind of perks uh, and benefits, Michael Patrick, that um, legislators and former legislators need to give up. Uh, we can no longer afford them. They need to show, Bill Schuette needs to show that he understands the sacrifice that Michigan people have had to make in this tough economy. And by clinging to these perks, to this outrageous pay increase, to this lifetime health care, refusing to cut his salary as attorney general, he shows how out of touch he is with the struggles of the average Michigan person. Your old opponent, Solonuzis, says that David Layton should resign the job he has today if he's unwilling to do the job of protecting the residents of Flint. Uh, they've had over 50 murders uh, this year, and uh, some people are saying that, that the National Guard should come in and, uh, and protect the city because the streets aren't safe. Well, David Layton's done an outstanding job as the prosecutor uh, in, the, in, the, in the city of Flint and in the county of Genesee. You know, over a 90% conviction rate, 20,000 cases prosecuted by his office since he's been attorney general, excuse me, since he's been prosecutor. Yep. But this is really an effort to distract people from Bill Schuette, soft on crime uh, record as a judge. Um, mm -hmm. He let murderers and rapists and sexual predators out of jail reverse their convictions as a judge. He's trying to distract from that issue. Mark Brewer, chairman of the Michigan Democratic Party, thank you very much for the political chat this week.